Joining us now to talk about this and more in a CNBC exclusive is first since the company reported Charles Schwab CEO, Walt Bettinger. Walt, thank you for making the time. Nice to see you. Well, good morning, Sarah. Thanks for the invitation. It's, uh, it's wonderful to be with you again. So we have a lot to work through, but let's start on deposits, because I mentioned the quarterly decline, 30 percent down from where they were last year. I know the market expected numbers like this, but it doesn't feel like there's a ton of confidence that that issue is over, is it? Well, what we've seen is we've seen uh, investors make the very natural move that they that they should make and that we've encouraged them to make, and that is as rates have gone up, they've moved from transactional cash, relatively lower yielding bank deposits, into higher yielding uh, solutions. Again, all at Schwab. Um, when we look at the trajectory, in other words, the daily movements, February was lower than January, and then March was lower than February, uh, particularly if you make adjustment for the one day in March right after the, the SVB issues. And then April is lower than March and measurably lower, again, even taking into consideration uh, that April is tax month. So, so we're watching it very closely, but the trajectory would indicate that we're much closer to the end of this process than the beginning. That, well, that's a good update on April, because I was wondering if the tax seasonality was going to uh, exaggerate some of those deposit outflows. Well, can you explain cash sorting? Because a lot of the debate around your stock has to do with this idea of cash sorting and whether it's getting worse. And I know it relates to what you're talking about with customers moving money around. Yeah, well, I guess I wouldn't put it in a category of, of getting better or getting worse. Again, it's, it's a natural movement by clients when interest rates are uh, at zero, they mix their transactional cash. A, a way to think about that might be cash you have in a checking account or a brokerage account for trading with their long-term investment cash because there's no reason to keep the two separate from a yield standpoint. And when rates start to move up, then we reach out to our clients and encourage them to move their longer-term investment cash into a money market fund or a CD or treasury bills, whatever's in their best interest. And so they go ahead and take that action. Uh, we began that process uh, over a year ago, so we're probably ahead of maybe some of the other organizations that uh, they may be just entering into this, uh, uh, this world that you refer to as sorting. Uh, but, uh, but we see it, uh, again, we see the trajectory moderating. Um, but it's a good thing, and I don't want to put it in the context of something negative. It's what clients should do and what we encourage them to do. But also puts pressure on your, on your profitability. Well, it does in the short run, but, but at Schwab, we play a much longer-term uh, approach than that. Uh, uh, we want to do what's right by the client. When I think of strategy and, and, and when I think of the way clients view us as a, a safe port in the storm and, and a trusted partner, we want to always do what's right for them. And in the long run, we think that pays off much better than any shorter-term strategy that is near-term profit-oriented. I remember when we talked, Walt, well, during the more depths of the crisis in March, and, and a lot of people were eyeing Schwab, your stock was getting hammered, and, and you came on to clear up a few misconceptions. And I'm wondering if you feel there have been any since then, since you did the earnings and business update earlier this week. It's still such a hotly debated name. Well, I think early on there was a lot of uh, misinformation about our uh, bank balance sheet and, and whether we had gone out and purchased uh, long-dated securities, things of that nature. And we've tried to clear that up uh, with, uh, with some of the commentary that we've made. But again, I think what's really important is we've tried to clear it up for our clients. So institutional investors, they understand the difference between comments that we would make that are, of course, from a regulatory standpoint, uh, certain to be as accurate as we can, and maybe a blog post or, or an article that, that maybe has a, a catchy headline. But for individual investors or retail investors, discerning between those two can be complicated. And so it's beholden on us to be out, tell our message, make sure that facts are in the market. And we're grateful that uh, that you and others have given us that opportunity to do so. So a lot of it now has to do with on the pressure on the stock with the earnings pressure that we're seeing across the banking system, but particularly, you know, earnings are falling, cost, cost pressures are rising. When, when does that, how much more pressure do you see there? And when, and when does the cost side peak? 
Well, I think that we're, we're going to experience some <laughs> modest pressure on our margins as we move into the next couple of quarters. So we, we were almost 46% adjusted pre-tax margin in Q1. I think a margin that most firms in financial services would be awfully happy with. Um, and we could see some modest pressure on that over the coming quarters. But as I indicated in our business update on Monday, we expect the more expensive uh, funding that we've, uh, that we've accessed, principally yep. CDs, but some borrowings from the FHLB, we expect to have that largely paid off by the end of 24. And, and you should see our, our margins begin to, to grow as we get possibly later into this year, but certainly as we move into 2024.